What is going on guys, DBG, and today we're going to be going over the top 10 guys, the pink diamonds specifically, that you guys can buy for under 10,000 MT in NBA 2K23, my team lads. So, we're going to be going over two per position, two point guards, two shooting guards, two small forwards, two power forwards, and two um, centers. So there is one of the small forwards, I think it's like 12k MT, because... Well, I think the only pink diamond small forward in the game is Bailey Howell. That's under 10, and I'm not the biggest fan of him, to be honest. Anyway, let's, um, sorry, there's two. There's a really good one, then there's Bailey Howell's the second one. But point guards, top two are shooting guards, and one is clearly should be the first person that comes up when you type in Mike, shouldn't he? My, or sorry, when you type in D for D'Antoni. Mike D'Antoni, lads. Mike D'Antoni, what's he like, 7.5k? Like, this might be one of the best value guards in all of my team. Like, legitimately, I, I use this guy as... He's in my squad. Like, I'm very, very torn. Like, 7.5k. And, like, I'm really torn between whether I want to use him as my third choice point guard. Or Dennis Johnson. That's how good he is. Dennis Johnson is really good. Mike D'Antoni's even better. So... Got a perfect three ball, a good driving dunk with quick drops. Very, very solid perimeter defense. Interior leaves a lot to be desired, but solid perimeter defense. He's got really good speed and really good lateral quickness. So he's a not he's a mediocre defender. He's got agent three amped blinders. Uh, guard up limitless range, climb bigger, quick first step. Steph Curry release with a better upper, even faster than Steph Curry's. I'm telling you, as lads, this card is a beast. Mighty and Tony's a beast. And a guy who I actually ran through 250. Are these the best two point guards under 10? No. Um, I would definitely put Penny Hardaway Amethyst above one, arguably both of these guys. But the fact that you guys can get um, Jaden Ivey for 7.5k. And when you're looking at Jaden Ivey, you're looking at a guy who is who's an 85-3 ball, a great driving dunk, good dribble style. His jumper is a, leaves a bit to be desired. Solid defense, unbelievable speed, unbelievable lateral. And he's just going to be more dunking, less shooting version of D'Antoni. His ability to shoot from deep is a bit iffy. I have really struggled with him for, well, for having like a range, it doesn't help. Um, And range, can you, can you, I don't even need hold range. It doesn't look like it. Um, But a really good dunker, really good defender, really good player build, 6'4". So I'm telling you, like, he's better than I thought he was going to be, but he is in here. Shooting guards, uh, we've got Kevin Herter first. Kevin Herter is a beast. Guys that didn't make this list are um, like Jason Richardson and Andre Iguodala. Those are the guys that didn't make the list. I think they might be the only two that didn't make it. Um, but Kevin Herter is a beast. Probably around 9-ish KMT. Um, did I accidentally... I hit triangle there, didn't I? Kevin Herter, color pink diamond. He's around 9-ish K. There or thereabouts. Um, but what you're getting with Kevin Herter is you're getting a really, really good shooter. He's got good dribbling. He can dunk pretty well. He's a solid defender. He's actually a good defender. And um, got really okay speed. Good lateral. The speed's a little bit if is probably the most iffy thing. But what you're getting is a fantastic shooter who's a really nice defender and can handle the ball a little bit if needed with the normal leaner on quick and a release that's super easy to green. It was like what last year's Trey Young was. Um, Kevin Herter is still one of my... He's still one of my underrated slept on shooting guys. I wouldn't actively use him. But there was a part of me that wanted to use him in my 250k quals. So if you're under 10, you can't really complain. And this guy being under 10, I completely forgot about it, is Andre Guadala. He's obviously everyone getting him from, from the limited packs. Um, or a lot of situations, Iggy's cheap. But Andre Guadala, he can't shoot. That's one of the problems. You can get him for an 8k. His release is very slow. And um, I can't shoot like he's like a, a poor shooter. He's, he can hit when he's wide open. But he's at 30 golds, 10 hops. Fantastic defender. I, I, I get it. He's got 93 ball. It's just a release. 95 driving dunk. Perfect defense. Perfect speed. Perfect lateral. If he had even a mediocre release, I would have him way above Herder. And he's probably my shooting guard. If he had a mediocre release, he's probably in over Mikael Bridges. Um, but his release is poor, but still for 8KMT, he is a steal. Small forwards, I mean, there is one obvious one who is way out in front. As far as small forwards go, it is Nick Batum. Nick Batum's really cheap. 
And like Nick Batum's not the worst player in the world. He's not the best, don't get me wrong. Like you're getting looking around 7.5k again for Nick Batum. But if you want to look stats wise and compare him to say Scotty, like they're very comparable in terms of inside. Ball handling, Batum's just better at everything passing wise, but again, passing IQ doesn't matter. Defensively, you might be saying, oh, there's a there is a big difference, but like it's only really in steel. They're very comparable defensively. And speed, like these guys are really comparable in game, stats wise. You got clamp breaker, anchor, blinders, challenger, clamps, glove on Batum. You got gold range. So like if you're actually looking at stats and badges, I'm not gonna lie. Batum is in he's in my team as a backup. But like if you're looking at stats and badges wise, Batum is very comparable to Sky. He is. He is. It's just with Batum, when it comes to Batum, you're looking at a guy who can't play shooting guard and a bad release. Which is a little bit of a which is the annoying thing because Batum's release was god tier. Like Batum for years had base 40 which always was one of the best catch and shoot releases in the game, one of the easiest catch and shoot releases in the game to green. And this year's Batum release, I just don't know how I feel about it. He also doesn't have a good leaner, which is another bit of a problem. Or that's one of the pros. It's one of the pro leaners. I mean, it's okay if you're going away from ball hand. Problem is, is that when you're with these leaners, to get the good animation, you're going away from ball hand, but then you're also getting the limitless shot, which is really hard to hit on a fade. So, like, it can be an effective mid-range fade. But for me, he just... He's a guy who stats and bad... Batum used to be a guy of animations. If you remember old years in 2K, Batum always had the best animations. So even if Batum didn't have the greatest stats or badges, he would always have a really good release. He would always have a really good um, like dribbling. He had the best, he used to have the best behind the back in the game always. The Pro 3 one. Batum was a guy of animations. And he also used to be 6'9 in-game. That is another thing with Batum. The issue is that Batum's only 6'8". If you want to use Batum in the Trey Murphy role of, like, a lot of people love Trey Murphy. If you want to use Batum to play defense, to hit wide open jump shots, and I honestly think he's, like, almost as good as Scotty. If you want to just use him as a pure cone, but his inability to really create off the dribble is what puts him a little bit off. But Batum, I think, might be one of the most slept on cards in the game, by the way. I genuinely do think he might be one of the most slept on cards. Um, but then we've got Trey Murphy and the problem with Trey Murphy is that he's a little bit above 10k so depending I can get him you can get him for 10 under 10 most of the time he's probably 11 12 right now when I originally made this list and um, had this list ready to go on yesterday he was under 10 and right now he's he's above 12 I think he should be way under this when I checked 10 minutes ago he was under he was 11 900 he was 11 900 10 minutes ago when I literally just checked this right before. Is he glitched or something? I can't I can't justify putting him on this list for 13k. Bailey Howell it is. Bailey Howell it is. Um as great as Trey Murphy is, you can get Bailey Howell for well under 10k. And Bailey Howell is a small forward with a half decent dribbling, a, a really good release, even though he's on the grace three-pointer. Can hit the fade. Solid on defense, solid overall. Only eight halves, but he get good, eight good halves. No range extender, but nah, he's like a worst to Rosen. Worst to Rosen. That is what I would call him. Worst to Rosen. Then the power forward position. The best under 10 is there's there are two guys that are better at power forward. I would if if I if I was in an ideal world, I would have this guy right here. Um not Odin. Um Odom. If I was in an ideal world, I would have Odom in small forward. Um, instead of Bailey Howell. But there are, there are literally only two centers I can put on this list, so I have to go for two of them. I unfortunately have to go for the two cent the only two centers that are available. Um, but, I, but they're both really good. The two centers will be moved to power forward. Um, but Odom is a fantastic guy. Again, a guy who, if you look at stats and badges wise, is quite close to KD in a lot of, in a, in a lot of ways. Um, 6'10", great shooter, really good dribbling this guy i'm tempted like i'm very very tempted to put lamar out of my squad man i think he comes free isn't he where he's free. he is either is free or was free in something he's not free all the way in clutch time is he it's cat for 50 clutch time offline wins is he free for clutch time online no 
I could have swore he was free in some way. Either way, though, Odom is... Odom's fa he's fantastic, lads. He is fantastic. If you're looking at that. I would use my small forward, but I have to kind of put him in here as a power forward. Because there aren't that many power forwards. Um, there aren't that many guys left to use. Then we get Jabari Smith, who, again, is just, just another power forward. Um, if you're looking at pink diamonds, you're not getting... They're, the only power forwards you're really getting are like Amari, Stadamar, and... Um, it's really just Amari and him. It's Amari, him, and that's about it. But Jabari Smith, solid shooter. Okay release. It's quick, but it's not the easy to green. Decent dunker. Defense is okay. Would definitely rather play him a small forward, but he's not too bad. And if you're looking at what I was saying, like if you're looking at pink diamond power forwards for under 10,000 feet, there are none. There are none, which is a little bit of an issue. Well, there are not there are none. There are no like real ones. Like I'm, I'm not putting KJ Martin on this list. I'm sorry, he's a six, he's six foot five. He's not coming. He's not going on the list. I'm not putting him even in a small forward. And at center number one, obviously, is Christian Wood. Christian Wood for under 10k is one of the biggest steals in all of my team. It is genuinely, genuinely one of the biggest steals in all of my team. Like I'm. I'm incredibly, like, surprised that he's as cheap as he is. I'm surprised he's as good as he is. That is one thing I will say. I'm, I'm very surprised he is as good as he is. His print time in Christian Wood is unbelievable. 7,750. He's got a big player build. His height's not the greatest, but he's got a big player build. The best popper in the game. He will not miss at pretty much. Unless he's tired, he's not going to miss. When he gets tired, he's released really hard to green, though, which is a little bit annoying. Great dunker, mediocre on defense, great rebounder, though, good speed for a center. And he's just a popper. And he's a damn good one. He's a really good one. And then this guy is now my backup. Like, I don't like Walker Kessler. So this guy is my third choice center. Like, I don't like Walker Kessler. So Bobby Board is in. Like, Bobby Board is now my, uh, my freaking backup center. Or my third choice center. Wood's my backup for all of Wakandi. Because and like Bobby Portis, you can get you can get Bobby Portis for like seven KMT. Why did Bobby Portis? Did I click enabled? You just can't. He's obviously you just you don't you just don't search for Bobby Portis then. Pink time position center, team books. Because I picked up my Bobby Portis for like seven KMT earlier. Can you just not search him or something? There we go. I must have clicked something. I must click something wrong on that, on the filter. But he's even cheaper. He's about a thousand MT cheaper than Christian Wood. You can get him for in the in the low seven thousands range. And we are getting you know, Bobby Portis. His decent player build, a really good three point shooter, a mediocre def defender, but solid enough interior, a good rebounder, really good speed, good enough lateral. He got bully, draft saber, masher, claymore, limitless range, Hall of Fame, as well as a bunch of golds. And by default, he's in here. Um, I just. I don't like what Walker Kessler brings defensively. Bobby Ford is never going to play for me. He's only in there just because Christian Wood's going to be in there. So, like, with the with team I have right now, I probably will have Batum in for Luol Deng. So, this is the team I'm running with, my actual squad. Denny's too expensive to be on this list. And you're seeing Lu Batum in the squad, D'Antoni in the squad, Christian Wood in the squad, and Bobby Ford is in the squad. So, like, I've got these guys in my squad. So, I'm kind of walking the walk, a little, not just talking the talk. I will be running these guys. If that's the video, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.